Right now, in Guizhou Province, China, a cargo ship weighing hundreds of tons is gliding through the mountains, not on a river, but 200 meters in the sky. It enters a vast steel chamber, the gates close, and in less than an hour, it's lifted higher than a 60-story building. The chamber itself weighs tens of thousands of tons, suspended by hundreds of cables and pulleys. This isn't science fiction. It's the world's tallest ship lift, moving vessels almost 200 meters vertically, like elevators built for ships. Across China and beyond, these colossal machines are redefining river transport. They overcome height differences that once made inland shipping impossible, and they do it with an elegance that feels closer to magic than engineering. But here's the twist. While ship lifts are spectacular, China's next canal megaproject isn't about going higher, it's about being smarter. In Guangxi province, engineers are carving a 134km waterway to the sea, and at its heart sits the world's largest water-saving ship lock. This is the story of how China is reinventing the very idea of a canal for the 21st century. To understand why ships now sail through the sky, we need to look at what happens when humans block a river. For thousands of years, the Yangtze flowed uninterrupted for over 6,000 kilometers. Vessels could sail from China's coast deep into its interior without ever stopping. Then came the Three Gorges Dam a 185-meter wall of concrete that instantly split the river in two. Upstream, the reservoir now sits 113 meters higher than the river below, the equivalent of a 37-story building dropped between two highways. Traditional locks can bridge that gap, but only up to a point. The five-stage lock system at Three Gorges can handle ships of 10,000 tons, moving around 160 million tons of cargo a year. But each transit still takes three to four hours. For a country scaling up inland trade, that's a bottleneck. Here's the dilemma. With a 113 meter elevation difference, you can either build many small locks, slow and complex, or fewer massive ones, which hit limits of water pressure and structural engineering. Neither option worked for every type of traffic. So engineers needed something complementary. The question became, what if smaller priority vessels could skip the staircase entirely? Ship lifts weren't invented to be spectacular. They were created to solve problems locks can't handle. The main one is extreme height. Beyond about 30 to 40 meters, a lock staircase becomes impractical. You'd need too many chambers, too much space, and far too much water. Three Gorges is the perfect case. To cover its 113 meter height with locks alone, you'd need at least 8 to 10 chambers. Each takes half an hour to fill and drain, meaning 4 to 5 hours per ship. That's unworkable when you're trying to move 160 million tons of cargo a year. A ship lift solves this in one move, and it comes with another crucial advantage, water conservation. Locks lose water with every passage. It drains downstream and is gone. Lifts recycle the same water over and over. Whether the chamber holds just water or water plus ship, the total weight stays balanced. The motors only need to overcome friction. The engineering logic is clear. Height under 30 meters with abundant water, locks work. Height over 40 meters or water scarce, lifts make more sense. Extreme terrain, lifts may be the only option. Since its opening in 2016, the Three Gorges ship lift has carried more than 25,000 vessels, proving that when geography demands it, ships really can climb mountains. And if raising ships 113 meters sounds impressive, in China's mountains, engineers have already gone much higher. But in the mountains of Guizhou, China, engineers took this idea to the extreme. If lifting ships 113 meters was revolutionary, what about 199 meters? That's nearly the height of a 66-story skyscraper. And instead of one lift, imagine a chain of them, connected by aqueducts and tunnels that send ships sailing through the sky. Welcome to the Gupatan Shiplift.
At Gubitan in Guizhou, ships climb nearly 199 meters across a 2.3 kilometer sequence. A 72 meter vertical lift, an elevated aqueduct, a record 127 meter single lift, more aqueduct, a navigation tunnel, then an upper variable lift up to 47 meters. Completed in 2021 for about 777.5 million US dollars, it's designed for approximately 2.928 million tons a year and 500 ton vessels. In footage, it looks unreal. Ships gliding across bridges and into mountains. All this sits in an earthquake prone landslide sensitive landscape. So the lifts and guideways were engineered for tight tolerances under seismic load. Gupitan takes shiplifting to the extreme. Nearly 200 meters across aqueducts and tunnels carved through the mountains. It's the high point of what shiplifts can do. But not every challenge is about going higher. Sometimes it's about being smarter. Because just as Gupitan redefined shiplifts, another project in China is reimagining the lock itself dragging a centuries-old technology into the 21st century. That project is the Pinglu Canal. The Pinglu Canal stretches 134 kilometers from inland rivers to the Beibu Gulf, China's first major river-to-sea canal since the founding of the People's Republic. At a cost of $10.1 billion, it's more than infrastructure. It's a catalyst for economic transformation. By cutting shipping routes by 560 kilometers, it shaves days off inland journeys, turning them into 15 to 17 hours of direct sailing to Asian markets. By 2035, it's designed to move 95 million tons of cargo annually. But the real innovation sits at Medau Junction, the first of three navigation hubs that must lift ships 65 meters from sea level to inland waters. Here, China is building something unprecedented the world's largest inland water-saving ship lock. Traditional locks work like bathtubs. Fill them up, lift the ship, drain them out. Every drop flows downstream and disappears forever. The Medau lock changes that. The main chamber is colossal, 300 meters long, 34 meters wide, 8 meters deep, big enough for multiple 5,000-ton vessels. Its size isn't what makes it revolutionary. It's what happens to the water inside. On either side sit three stepped reservoirs. When a ship descends, water doesn't drain away. It's captured in these chambers. When the next ship needs lifting, that stored water is pumped back in, stage by stage. The result? 63% water savings on every passage. Think of it as a giant hydraulic battery, storing potential energy and reusing it on the next cycle. This isn't just about efficiency. It's about reimagining what a canal can be. For the first time, water is treated as a resource to be recycled, not wasted. And if it works at scale, it could redefine canal design in water-scarce regions worldwide. With opening scheduled for December 2026, the world is about to find out whether smart locks can move massive cargo volumes and drag a centuries-old technology into the 21st century. But canals are never just about engineering. They're about economics, trade, and power. And Ping Lu may prove just as transformative above the waterline as it is inside its locks. The Ping Lu Canal isn't just about moving ships. It's about moving money. For landlocked provinces like Guizhou and Yunnan, it cuts 560 kilometers off trade routes turning multi-day detours into 15 to 17 hours of direct sailing to Southeast Asia. That shift alone is expected to save more than $700 million a year in transport costs. By 2035, the canal is projected to move 95 million tons of cargo annually, rising to 150 million tons by 2050. That's the equivalent of shipping every car built in China in a single year through one waterway. The ripple effects are already visible. New ports, industrial parks, and rail connections are already under construction along the route. Nanning, Guangxi's capital, is positioning itself as the inland gateway to ASEAN's 650 million consumers. Pinglu anchors China's new international land-sea trade corridor, 
offering a direct western outlet to the sea, reducing reliance on crowded eastern ports and building redundancy into China's trade network. The scale of construction is staggering. Crews must excavate 339 million cubic meters of rock and soil, about three times more than the Three Gorges Dam. The most complex work sits at Medau Junction, where engineers must dig 65 meters down through hard rock to build the water-saving lock. The concrete volume alone could fill 1,400 Olympic swimming pools, and it has to be poured with millimeter-level precision. All this in subtropical Guangxi, where monsoon rains can flood work sites for weeks, and the ground beneath hides unstable karst formations that risk collapse. Yet, despite these hurdles, construction runs 24 hours a day, and the project remains on track for December 2026 completion. It's an ambitious timeline for a highway, let alone a canal system pioneering new lock technology. If its smart locks really save 63% of water per passage while handling 5,000-ton vessels on repeat, it becomes a template for canals worldwide. Regions that once dismissed waterway projects, Australia, North Africa, Central Asia, could suddenly reconsider. Even existing giants like Panama or Suez might retrofit water-saving basins in future expansions to stay viable as rainfall patterns shift. But the technology will face its true test under pressure. Can the hydraulic systems maintain efficiency when traffic surges? Can the AI-driven water management adapt to unpredictable schedules and ship sizes? By 2029, the canal should reach its full operational capacity. Then we'll know whether Pinglu marks the beginning of a new era in canal design or remains an impressive but isolated experiment. For over a century, canals followed the same rulebook. Dig a channel, build locks, waste the water. Ping Lu breaks that pattern. For the first time, a major canal treats water as a renewable resource inside the system. Ship lifts like Gupitan show that engineering can conquer geography. Ping Lu's smart locks show that engineering can be sustainable at scale. Together, they represent two paths forward for 21st century infrastructure. Spectacular solutions for impossible terrain, efficient solutions for everyday trade. Both will have their place. But in a world where resource efficiency increasingly determines what gets built, the smart money may be on smart locks. So, which breakthrough will matter more for the future of global trade? Ships soaring 200 meters above valleys on colossal elevators? Or canals that recycle billions of liters of water with every passage? The answer depends on where you build them. Lifts conquer the impossible. Locks optimize the possible. But what's certain is this. Both technologies are rewriting the rules of how goods move across our planet. Which one do you think will have the bigger impact over the next century? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more Mega Build stories. See you in the next one.